was a surprisingly warm evening in mid-autumn when it happened. Or at least that's what Constable Arthur Billington kept telling himself as he sipped from his newly brewed tea. There seemed to be nothing particularly peculiar about that night, and yet he couldn't shake the feeling there was something more. He had continued his beat as usual, as the sun began to set beyond the terraced houses, and the street lamps sprung into life, billowing their pale glow. His partially polished shoes tapped steadily against the pavement, as he made his way towards the old junkyard on Totter's Lane. Numerous times he had passed those large blue gates, painted with large white letters spelling out I. M. Foreman Scrap Merchants, and paid the premises no mind. His light green eyes scanned the street as he continued on his beat to the next street and beyond. But that particular night, something felt different somehow, and not just because it was unusually warm for the time of year. There was someone there that night who shouldn't have been. Someone who, despite his frailties, was much more than he truly seemed, and how he had appeared out of the darkness ran shivers down his spine. Doctor Who Short Stories That Night on Tartar's Lane Constable Billington brushed himself down as he prepared for his evening beat. His helmet, truncheon and handcuffs placed neatly on his nightstand. It seemed somewhat warmer than the previous evenings, but he paid it no mind as he secured his accoutrements and lifted his helmet upon his head, his light green eyes glinting in the mirror as he made last-minute checks of his uniform, ensuring his whistle was at hand. Newer technologies such as better cars and radios were coming into use, but neither compared to a traditional officer's whistle which could carry across surprisingly great distances for so simple a device. Taking one last look at his reflection, he took off, locking his door and beginning his evening beat. He had taken several different beats across the area, but this particular one was always his favourite, as he passed many favourable businesses and passed just shy of Coal Hill School, where he had once been a student. He knew of at least one of his old classmates, who now taught there as a history teacher, but he could never for the life of him remember her name. As he continued on his beat, and the last light of day began to dissipate, Constable Billington reached for his torch and switched it on, carefully, ensuring he didn't shine it too near the windows of houses he passed. Several street lamps brightly shone up and down the streets as he traversed the various footpaths leading in the direction of Totter's Lane, where he often passed and paid no mind to the junkyard beyond. His footfalls echoed in the warm air as he shone his torch around the street, taking in the shadows leaping out of the darkness and vanishing as the light of his torch crossed them. Despite the warmness, he couldn't help the feeling he was being watched as a shiver ran down his spine. He tried to shake it off as nonsense. He was meant to be the strong, stiff upper lip arm of the law. Nothing in this world could dampen his spirits or chill his blood, but it was of little help, as the feeling of being watched creeped up on him again. He turned his torch in haste, looking for whatever it was staring at him, but nothing showed itself. He took to putting the matter out of his mind once more, just as a soft yet stern voice called from the shadows, "'Can I help you, officer?' Constable Billington a whirled around in shock as he took in the dark figure emerging from the darkness, his torchlight illuminating the stranger's attire, which appeared to be several decades out of date, a black frock coat, pearly striped waistcoat, white shirt, dark blue cravat, grey checkered trousers, and sharp shiny shoes. His silvery white hair was drawn back and almost draping his shoulders, and his wrinkled, gaunt face looked almost chiselled from marble. The old gentleman raised his right hand, 
upon which a singular blue jewelled ring sat and spoke sternly. Would you kindly lower your light, officer? Constable Billington shot back to reality and lowered his torch swiftly, keeping it in view of the stranger. Thank you, the old gentleman continued, lowering his hand whilst also raising a subtle finger. As useful as they are, torches should not blind one so. Now, may I ask again, can I help you, officer? Constable Billington half stumbled over his words as he began to respond. Forgive me, sir. I know it's not becoming of a constable such as myself, but I had the curious sensation of being watched. The old gentleman's eyes glinted in the torchlight as he cautiously approached the constable. Being watched, you say, hm? How peculiar. Constable Billington straightened up just as the old gentleman reached his hand up to his free arm. He continued softly, Do you think it reasonable an upstanding officer of the law like yourself should be so preoccupied with something so insignificant as being watched? Constable Billington swiftly shook his head, not unlike a schoolboy who had just been scolded. I should think not, the old gentleman concluded, releasing the constable's arm and slowly walking away. Before Constable Billington could speak up, the stranger had vanished once more into the shadows. Even Billington's torch spied no sign of the old gentleman as he went on with his beat that evening. As he passed the gates reading I. M. Foreman Scrap Merchants, he barely noticed the old gentleman disappear beyond them and head towards a familiar blue box just to the right. As Constable Arthur Billington sat there drinking the last dregs of his tea, he never forgot that evening, even as he took the same beat the next couple of evenings, and saw nor sight nor sound of the old gentleman again. He never even knew his name, but his presence alone was enough to keep him wondering. No sooner had he finished and laid down his cup and saucer than the telephone rang. With haste he reached down and raised the receiver to his ear. It was the inspector, asking if he could report immediately to 76 Totters Lane, the address of the infamous scrap merchants. As he agreed to report there forthwith, he gave a quick glance at the calendar hanging above the phone with the days marked off, before sighing and getting himself ready. The date of the precise day unmarked could never be mistaken, as not one day prior, the late John F. Kennedy had been assassinated. <laughs>